Hello dear students, welcome to VTU e-Shikshana program. Myself is Dr. Basuraj BC, Professor, Department of Chemistry, Bangalore Institute of Technology. Here we are going to discuss with you Module 5 of Engineering Chemistry. As all of you know, Module 5 comprises of water chemistry, volumetric analysis and instrumental methods of analysis. In this session, we are going to discuss water chemistry part and in water chemistry part, as all of you know, uh, we will be discussing about sources, impurities in water, potable water, meaning and specifications as per WHO standards, as per Indian Bureau standards and we will also be discussing hardness of water, types of hardness and determination of hardness, how do we determine, determine the hardness of the water sample and we will also be solving some numerical problems on hardness of the water sample. Then we will be discussing COD of the water sample, how to find out COD, what is the meaning of COD, what is the importance of finding out uh, COD and we will also be solving some numerical problems on the concept of COD. And in this session, In this session, we will be uh, discussing about impurities in water and BOD, mainly what are all the sources of water, what do you mean by potable water, what are all the specifications to decide whether the given water sample is potable or not and we will also be discussing briefly about one of the kinds of the impurities that is biologically oxidizable impurities that is BOD. When we try to understand about the sources of water, out of total quantity of the water existed in this earth, how that water is being distributed, out of the total quantity of the water existed, 97 percent of the water is existed in the form of oceans and seas. That is 97 percent of the water is in the form of oceans and seas that is the salty water only 3 percent of the water is fresh water and out of this 3 percent, out of this 3 percent, 68 percent of the water is in the form of icebergs, is in the form of glaciers, whereas 30.1 percent of the water is in the form of ground water, whereas only 0.3 percent of the water is surface water and around 0.9 percent of the water is in other forms. And out of 0.3 percent, which is in the surface, 87 percent of the water is in the form of lakes and 11 percent is in the form of swamps that is not that much usable and only 2 percent of the water is in the, is in the form of rivers. So, out of the total quantity of the water existed uh, in this earth. 97 percent of the water is salty water which is not suitable directly for our domestic purposes, drinking or any other domestic purposes or even for industrial purposes, whereas only 3 percent of the water is fresh water. Out of 3 percent of the water, only 0.3 percent of the water is in the form of surface water, whereas remaining water, remaining fresh water is in the form of icebergs and glaciers and also in the form of ground water and out of this 0.3 percent, 87 percent of the water is in the form of lakes, rivers 2 percent and 11 percent is in the form of swamps, is in swamps it is not that much usable. So therefore, out of the total quantity of the water existed in this earth, hardly 0.3 percent of the water is available for us in the form of rivers and lakes which we can use directly for our domestic purposes. And uh, this water as all of you know, it's, the water is not only used for our, uh, for the existence of plant and animal life, it is also being used uh, for the purpose of industrial 
activities and it is also used in many of the nuclear power plants, thermal power plants etc. as a source of heat because when the water is being boiled it produces it becomes steam and steam will be holding huge quantity of heat energy for that part purpose also water is being used. Therefore, water not only used for the existence of plant and animal life it is also being used uh, extensively for the industrial activities because water is being not only used as a solvent in industries, it is also being used as a medium, it is also being used as uh, one of the reactants in many of the chemical and biological processes which are being carried out in various industries. And among the different kinds of the water samples which are being existed, maybe sea water, lake water or river water, whatever it is, the water that meets all the required parameters of pure water, water that meets all the required parameters of pure water which is having the required parameters or properties, biological, physical, chemical properties of the pure water and it is fit for cons consumption is what we call as potable water. Therefore, Potable water is nothing but the water which is pure in nature and which is fit for our consumption that is what we call as potable, potable water. In order to decide whether any given water sample, any given source of water is potable or not, is suitable for our usage or not, we have several parameters, several quality parameters based on which we will decide whether we can decide whether the given water sample is portable or not, which is fit for consumption or not, which is fit for domestic or regular usage or not. What are all those parameters? These parameters are being decided or set by Bureau of Indian Standards as well as World Health Organization. We will briefly go through those parameters which will tell us about the uh, quality of the water in terms of the, in terms of its uh, suitability for our regular usage. So, there are various parameters based on which we can decide whether the given water sample, whether the given source of water is really suitable for our regular usage. So, some of the parameters which are being listed here. So, water to be suitable for our usage, it must be odorless, it must be colorless, it must be tasteless. These are the basic parameters for any portable water water must be odorless, colorless and tasteless. And when it comes to pH, pH of the potable water, pH of the water which is suitable for our usage must be between 6.5 and 8.5 and BOD, biological oxygen demand of the potable water must be less than 6 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. COD of the water sample must be less than 10 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Electrical conductivity, electrical conductivity of the water is also depending upon the level of uh, the various ions which are being, uh, conductive ions which are being present in water. Electrical conductivity of the water must be less than 300 mu mo per centimeter. Total suspended substances must be less than 5 milligrams of oxygen per, 5 milligrams per dm cube. Total dissolved substances must be less than 500 millig milligrams per dm cube. So, out of these many parameters as of now whatever we have discussed, we will be try discussing in detail about BOD and COD. So, BOD of any water sample which is suitable for our usage must be less than 6 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube, COD must be less than 10 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. And coming further total hardness of the given water sample. Any water sample which must be having its hardness which should be less than 300 ppm of calcium carbonate. So, if it is more than 300 ppm, it will be uh, creating so many other problems. We will be discussing about the problems created by hard water in the coming session. So, uh, for any water to be suitable for our usage, the hardness of the water sample must be less than 300 ppm of calcium carbonate and the quantity of the sulphate must be less than 200 ppm, quantity of chlorides in the water must be less than 250 ppm, quantity of nitrates in the water must be less than 45 ppm, 
quantity of cyanides must be less than 0 0.05 ppm, quantity of fluorides must be less than 1 ppm, quantity of pesticides must be less than 0 0.005 ppm. So, pesticides are going to be usually present in ground water because of the usage of a heavy quantity of pesticides during the process of agriculture and the quantity of lead and arsenic must be less than 0 0.05 ppm and mercury and cadmium in the water sample to be suitable for our usage must be less than 0 0.01 ppm. So, you may be knowing that uh, many of the areas in Karnataka itself, some uh, may be Kolar district and some North Karnataka districts, ground water is rich in fluoride. So, it is having more quantity of fluoride uh, more than 1 ppm. So, when the fluoride is more pr present in water beyond the limit, it leads to so many, pro particularly leads to the problem uh, in the case of uh, the tooth uh, uh, decaying, it will be causing tooth decaying and, uh, and uh, in uh, many of the North Karnataka villages, you may be knowing that the ground water is rich in arsenic. So, it will be creating so many health problems. The presence of sulphates, chlorides, nitrates, cyanides, etc. beyond this limit will be creating so many health problems if we are consuming that kind of the water continuously or regularly. So, in this way, these are the quality parameters based on which we can decide, we can come to know whether any source of water, any given sample of water is suitable for our regular usage. Is it fit for our usage? Is it fit for not only the domestic usage? It is, is it fit for not only the uh, uh, consumption usage? Is it fit for industrial usage also? We can decide by knowing, by testing any given source of water by, by testing any given water sample for these many parameters. And some of these parameters may keep on changing from time to time along with the uh, development of science and technology. Some of the parameters, these values may keep on change along with the co due course of time. So, anyway, so we understand as of now that any water sample which is suitable, which is fit for our consumption is being called as portable water. And this portable water will be decided with, with the portable water, whether the given water sample is portable or not, whether the given water sample, whether the given source of water is suitable for our usage or not is being decided by these many quality parameters. So, these many, these quality para, para parameters are being uh, set by uh, the WHO and Bureau of Indian Standards based on which we can get an idea about the quality of the any given water sample. So, as of now, we try to understand, we, uh, we understood that among all the total quantity of the water existed in this earth, hardly 0.3 percent of the water is available for us for our regular usage. And out of this 0.3 percent of the water also, some quantity of the water, some part of the water, major, major part of the water may be impure to one or the other level. So, we have to know whether the water sample, whether any given source of water sample is suitable for our usage or not and that we decide based on these many parameters. And what are the sources of water we have? What are all the sources of water we have with us? As all of us know very well that there are mainly five different sources of water. One is rain water, another one is sea water, the river water, then lake water and ground water. So, when we go through these many sources of water, almost every source of water is impure to one or the other extent. So, we cannot have generally, we cannot have the 100 percent pure water. But if the water, if any water sample contains some impurities, but if those impurities are within the permitted limit, then we can say that water sample is portable water. So, we, uh, we, we believed that rain water is the most uh, uh, purest form of the water. Yes, it is purest form, but when it enters into the earth's atmosphere, it will be dissolving the gases which are present in the earth's atmosphere, like it will be dissolving the gases uh, like oxides of sulfur, it will be dissolving sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide, it will be dissolving small amount of oxygen and all, all it will all, it will be dissolving also some of the 
solid particles also which are present very smallest sized solid particles also which are present in the earth's atmosphere thereby by the time it reaches that surface the rainwater also becomes impure to certain extent whether it is impure beyond the limit thereby it is not suitable for our usage it depends upon the extent of the impure gases the dangerous gases which are present in the earth's atmosphere in the given area similarly sea water as all of us know sea water is not suitable for our consumption it is not suitable for any domestic purpose also because it contains highest percentage of the dissolved salts it contains around 3.6 percent of the dissolved salts out of the 3 percent 3.6 percent of dissolved salts around 2.6 percent of sodium chloride is alone there along with that it will be containing chlorides sulfates bromides of potassium magnesium sodium etc so sea water is not suitable for our usage at all because it is too much salty in water as it contains 3.6 percent of the total dissolved salts when it comes to river water river water usually we think that it is pure yes it is pure compared to other sources of water but river water contains lots of organic matter when the river is flowing through river or the uh, small streams of water flowing through the soil flowing through forest areas and other areas it will be dissolving it will be the, uh, the leaves of the trees uh, dead trees the sometimes dead animal bodies or the leaves etc will be flowing along with the river water so that will that will make river water to contain lots of organic matter and may, and when wherever the river is flowing it will be dissolving some of the salts of sodium potassium magnesium etc and depending upon the area depending upon the uh, soil depend uh, through which the river is flowing uh, and but depending upon the nature of the soil what kind of salts present in that soil those kinds of the salts will be dissolved in river water therefore river water also will be containing lots of organic matter in it and it also be containing some of the dissolved salts so that's what the reason many of the areas the natural streams and rivers uh, uh, many of the areas it will be uh, tasting sweet because of the presence of uh, the dissolved salts then lake water lake water compared to river water we can say compared to river water if the lake water is formed out of the natural source of water lake water is comparatively more pure compared to river water lake water mainly contains the organic matter but less of dissolved impurities less of dissolved impurities because the river is flowing through various areas various different kinds of the soils larger distance it will be dissolving different kinds of the salts throughout its journey whereas lake water will be containing less amount of the dissolved impurities whereas it contain containing more amount of organic matter organic matter the lake uh, there will be the uh, dead trees twigs leaves etc may be present in, in the lake water along with the aquatic life so therefore it contains more of organic matter less of dissolved impurities then the another source of water is ground water as all of you know it contains less of impurities but it mainly contains dissolved minerals so as already told you some of the parts in karnataka itself uh, uh, ground water is rich in fluoride in some areas ground water is rich in arsenic in some areas so depending upon the nature of the soil depending upon the nature of the rocks so uh, in the ground in the underground in the beneath the earth surface uh, the ground water when it is percolating into the earth surface earth surface it may it dissolves some of the minerals which are present uh, in the uh, beneath the earth surface so in the earth's crust we can say so de depending upon the kind of the minerals present there the groundwater also may contain different kinds of minerals therefore groundwater also is not pure but it we have to see what kind of minerals which are being dissolved in groundwater if the uh, as we already uh, discussed some of the areas in karnataka uh, groundwater is rich in fluorides that means in those areas the uh, be beneath the earth surface 
the fluoride content is more the salts of fluoride fluoride salts are more in present more in concentration therefore that water that ground water is containing more of fluoride impurity similarly some of the parts in north karnataka the ground water is rich in arsenic because in those areas the earth's crust beneath the earth's surface the arsenic is present more therefore when the water is rain water is percolate, percolating into the earth's crust it get it dissolves that arsenic thereby the ground water becomes rich in arsenic in those areas so overall we have mainly five different sources of water rain water sea water river water lake water and ground water all these sources are impure in terms of chemistry we can say impure in one or the in in one or the other level in and out of all this sea water is totally not suitable for our regular usage because it is too much salty in nature whereas other sources of water are suitable for our usage but they also contain impurities and the level of impurities and kind of impurities present in rain water river water lake water and ground water it is generally depending upon the kind of the gases present in the earth's atmosphere wherever it is being raining and kind of the, the salts which are being dissolved in river water kind of the organic impurity present in lake water and kind of the minerals which are being dissolved in ground water so overall uh, um, uh, out of except sea water all the other sources of water are going to be the source of the fresh water but this fresh water source is also not 100% pure impure to certain extent to what extent it is impure it is depending upon the nature of the soil nature of the earth's atmosphere and so on so out of all these sources of water as we already understood every source is impure to one or the other extent what kind of impurities which are basically make water to impure in nature what kind of impurities which are generally present in water in most of the cases there are different kinds of impurities present in water and these impurities what they do is they make water to be not suitable for our regular usage and that kind of the pollution of water is what we call as water pollution any variation in the physical biological and chemical properties of water or contamination of water by any other dangerous chemical species is what is called as water pollution so any variation in the physical biological chemical properties of water because all of us know water is a chemical having the chemical formula h2o so being a chemical it's having its own set of chemical physical and biological properties any variation in these properties of water physical chemical biological properties of water which makes water not to be suitable for our regular usage is what we call as water pollution so though water may contain some impurities though water contains some impurities but these impurities are if they are present within the limit thereby the don't vary the chemical physical and biological properties too much thereby the don't make they don't make the water not to be suitable for regular use, regular usage in that case we may not call it as we may not consider it as water pollution if the contaminants if the dangerous chemicals if they mix with water and they make the change in chemical biological and chemical uh, physical properties of water thereby make that water not to be suitable for our regular usage then we call that kind of the pollution as water pollution overall any variation in the physical biological chemical properties of water or contamination of water by any other dangerous chemical species is what is called as water pollution what kind of impurities which makes water to be polluted what kind of impurities which make to be, which make water to be impurities uh, water uh, to be polluted there are uh, three to four different kinds of impurities one of the most important kinds of impurities common kinds of impurities is suspended impurities suspended impurities are the impurities like for example the a piece of wood a, 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 a piece of wood or a dead part of the tree a tree or a, a leaves of the trees etc they will be remaining suspended on the surface of water the suspended impurities are the impurities which are floating on the surface of the water for long time 
So these impurities are mainly leaves, branches, twigs, decaying or dead waste etc. Decaying body of the plants or animals, dead bodies of the plants and animals etc. They will be floating on the surface of the water for a long time. These kinds of impurities are generally called as suspended impurities. And these suspended impurities can be removed either by filtration or by coagulation. If the suspended impurities present in water, if they are big enough in size, they can be removed easily by filtration. If the suspended impurities are very smaller in size, then we have to go for coagulation method. We have to go for coagulation process by using suitable coagulating agent, we will be removing those small sized suspended impurities. So, overall, suspended impurities are one of the most important kinds of impurities which are generally present in water and these impurities and these impurities will be floating on the surface of water for a long time and these impurities involve leaves, branches, twigs, decaying or dead bodies of the animals and plants and they will uh, make water to be impure and these impurities if they are bigger in size they can be easily removed by filtration and if they are smaller in size, they will be removed by coagulation process by using any suitable coagulating agent. The another kind of the impurities which are present in water are dissolved impurities. Dissolved impurities as the name itself indicates, these are present in the water sample for long time in the dissolved form. These impurities will be present in the water in the dissolved form. Most of these impurities are inorganic salts and dissolved gases. So, out of the dissolved impurities, most of more than 70 percent of the impurities are dissolved salts and dissolved gases also will be present in water as impurities. Some of the gases like oxides of sulfur, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of carbon, even oxygen will be dissolved in water and we know that oxygen must be present in water in the dissolved form, then only that water is suitable for aquatic life and even if the oxygen is present in water in the dissolved form beyond certain limit, then that also will be acting as impurity because the, uh, if the oxygen is present in water in the dissolved form beyond the limit, if the oxides of nitrogen and carbon dioxide, all these are present in the water beyond the limit, then that will lead to boiler corrosion. So, because boiler corrosion means in, in many of the industries, particularly thermal power plants, nuclear power plants, etc., wherever we need to convert water into steam, thereby we use that steam as a source of heat energy. In all those cases, we use industrial boilers. There are different kinds of boilers like water tube boilers, fight tube boilers, etc. We use industrial boilers in order to convert water into steam. And if that water if that water contains oxygen in the dissolved form, oxides of nitrogen, oxides of uh, carbon dioxide in the dissolved form beyond certain limit, then these dissolved gases will be leading to boiler corrosion. So, when the water is being boiled inside the boiler, the inner parts of the boiler will get corroded by the action of these oxygen, oxides of nitrogen, carbon dioxide, etc. So, we think that oxygen must be present in the dissolved form, that is very much right. Then only that water is suitable for aquatic life, then only that water is healthy. But if the same oxygen is present in water in the dissolved form beyond the limit, beyond the limit, it will lead to boiler corrosion when that boiler, that, when that kind of the water is being used in industrial boilers. And these dissolved gases, when they are present as impurity in water, the, they can be removed very much easily by deaeration process or by any other suitable chemical treatments. By subjecting water into deaeration process uh, or by using any chemical treatment, we can remove these dissolved gases. And in the sewage treatment processes, when we, where we convert sewage water into drinking water, sewage water into pure water, we will carry out deaeration process mainly in order to remove the dissolved gases which are present in water beyond the limit. Then the salts like chlorides, bicarbonates and sulphates of calcium and magnesium. You studied this, you are, you, you are doing this experiment in the laboratory also. The salts of the chlorides, 
sulfates and bicarbonates of calcium magnesium when they are present in water beyond the limit beyond the limit they will make water to be hard in water uh, hard in nature when the water becomes hard in nature it is not suitable for washing purpose washing cloths that will we will be discussing later in detail and that kind of the hard water is not is also not suitable to be used in industrial boilers because they will be forming scaling inside the in at the inner surface of the boiler they will be these salts will be adhering strongly to the inner surface of the boiler thereby bringing down the efficiency heating efficiency of the boiler in the due process so that's what the reason the whenever these dissolved salts particularly chlorides bicarbonates sulfates of calcium magnesium present and other salts which are present in water in the dissolved form we will try to remove them either by using ion exchange process or by using reverse os osmosis process or by using electrodialysis process so whenever we carry out reverse osmosis or electrodialysis or even ion exchange we not only the uh, salts which are causing hardness all the kinds of the dissolved impurities dissolved compounds which are present in water can be removed by using reverse osmosis and electrodialysis method etc the third kind of the impurities are biological impurities biological impurities are mainly consisting of certain kinds of bacteria protozoa etc they will be present in water uh, as impurities thereby they make water not to be suitable for drinking purpose uh, for you know, human beings and animals because whenever the water containing these bacteria or protozoa etc when they are being used for consumption that will be uh, causing health problems they uh, leading to so many different kinds of bacterial infections diseases etc so and the as all of us know the the water infected with uh, bacteria protozoa etc when that kind of the water is being used for consumption they they will lead to the diseases like typhoid hepatitis cholera etc and not only they you know, cause diseases whenever water is contaminated with the bacteria protozoa etc beyond certain limit the water becomes water uh, becomes colored water becomes turbid and water also will be getting some odor it will be generating some odor therefore water becomes impure water becomes impure in terms of its appearance itself it it attains some color it becomes turbid in nature it also generates gen, it will be generating gradually some odor so whenever the water contains biological impurities like bacteria protozoa etc so therefore Uh, these biological impurities like some microorganisms they when they whenever they are present in water one side they make the water not to be suitable for drinking because when that water is being used for consumption that leads to different kinds of diseases like cholera typhoid etc and they also make water to be colored turbid and generate getting some odor and these kinds of biological impurities can be uh, many of these biological impurities like bacteria etc they can be removed by boiling and sometimes some of the biological impurities can be removed by carrying out chlorination the chlorine whenever whenever we chlorinate the water these pathogenic bacteria will be removed or will be killed now uh, as of now we have understood what are all the major sources of water out of the total quantity of the water existed in this earth around uh, only 0.3% of the water is available for our regular usage right even that 0.3% even that 0.3% is may not be suitable completely for our regular domestic usage out of the total quantity of the water existed in this universe in this earth 97% of the water is in the form of oceans and seas remaining out of remaining 3% only 0.3% uh, is uh, available in the form of fresh water like lakes rivers etc and that also may not be suitable completely for our regular 
usage. So therefore, we try to understand what are all the sources of water, rain water, lake water, etc. How each and every source of water may become impure due to the uh, due to various reasons, due to various processes that we try to understand. So whenever that become impure, uh, how to decide? How to decide whether any given source of water or sample of water is suitable for our regular domestic purpose or not. Thereby, in order to understand that, we gone through various parameters. Water must be odorless, colorless, etc. What should be the BOD level of the water, COD level, what should be the hardness level of the water, what should be the level of various chemicals in the water, uh, limited level. So, thereby, water, uh, thereby we can decide whether the given source of water is suitable for our domestic purpose or our regular usage or not. In that sense, we also gone through what are all the different kinds of impurities which can make water to be polluted because we understood that any variation in chemical, physical or biological properties of water is what we call by the mixing of contaminants is what we call, what we call as water pollution. What kind of contaminants which can make water to be polluted, which can make water not to be suitable for regular purpose. We gone through those things, biological impurities, dissolved impurities, suspended impurities. Briefly, we also discussed uh, how to remove those dissolved impurities, biological impurities and suspended impurities. Now, we try to understand a few things about one kind of the, one of the important kinds of impurities called as oxidizable impurities. <laughs> In the oxidizable impurities, what are these oxidizable impurities? We understood that there are different kinds of impurities which can be present in water. Suspended impurities can be removed by filtration or by coagulation. Dissolved impurities can be uh, removed by ion exchange method, reverse osmosis, etc. Biological impurities can be removed by uh, treating uh, with uh, chlorine or by boiling, etc. In this way, Every what kind of impurities are present, how to what kind of the problems caused by them and how to remove them. Among various kinds of impurities which can be generally present in water, one of the kinds of impurities are called as oxidizable impurities. So, these oxidizable impurities are the impurities, these impurities which can be oxidized by dissolved oxygen are generally called as oxidizable impurities. The impurities which are present in water, but they can be oxidized by oxygen or dissolved oxygen which can be called as oxidizable impurities. For example, imagine a water sample has some oxidizable impurities, it contains some oxidizable impurities. You are treating that oxidizable impurities with oxygen. So, oxygen what this oxygen will do? Oxygen oxidizes these impurities into CO2 and H2O. It is oxidizing these impurities into CO2 and H2O. That means what? These impurities in their original form, these impurities in their original form dangerous to our health. Therefore, whenever these impurities are present in water, we cannot use that water. When the, these impurities present in water beyond certain limit, therefore, in their original form, they are dangerous. When we discuss about dissolved impurities, suspended impurities, etc., we remove those impurities by various methods. Whereas, whenever the water sample contains oxidizable impurities, we do not try to remove them. We just try to oxidize them. Because as you are observing here, these are the impurities present in water. Upon oxidizing, they become CO2 and H2O. H2O is water only, CO2 being a gas escapes out. So, therefore, Whenever these impurities when they are present in water, instead of trying to remove them, we just try to oxidize them. That is why these are called as oxidizable impurities. And these oxidizable impurities are mainly responsible for decreasing the level of dissolved oxygen in water. So, because what happens, imagine a water sample, 1 liter of water you have with you and that contains oxidizable impurities. and Anyway, any water sample will be having certain amount of dissolved oxygen and dissolved oxygen must be there in any water sample to make water to be healthy, to make water to be suitable for aquatic life, to make, to make water to be suitable for even our consumption. And when that water sample contains oxidizable impurities, what happens is oxygen present in the water in the dissolved form, some part of the oxygen will be 
interacting with those oxidizable impurities and converting, oxidizing those impurities into CO2 and H2O. So, thereby what happens? A part of the oxygen is gone, a part of the small amount of the, uh, uh, a part of the oxygen which is dissolved in water is utilized for oxidizing, the, oxidizing these impurities. Thereby, out of the total quantity of the oxygen dissolved in water, some part of the oxygen is utilized for this purpose. Thereby, what happens? The quantity of the oxygen in the dissolved state or quantity of the dissolved oxygen in water will come down like anything. When the quantity of the dissolved oxygen comes down like anything in water or comes down beyond certain limit, that water will not be suitable for aquatic life, will not be suitable for regular usage purpose also. So, that is the reason we say oxidizable impurities are mainly responsible for decreasing the level of dissolved oxygen in water. And the amount of oxidizable impurities present in polluted water is measured in two ways. So, we came to know that among various kinds of impurities which are generally present in water, one of the kinds of the impurities are nothing but oxidizable impurities. And how much of these oxidizable impurities present in water? We have to find it out first. Then only we can decide whether to remove those oxidizable impurities or not. And we also understood that when we talk about oxidizable impurities, we do not try to remove them, we just try to oxidize them. So, whether to oxidize those impurities or not, we can decide by first by knowing how much of these oxidizable impurities present in the given water sample or given or present in the given water source. There are two different ways through which we can measure the amount of oxidizable impurities present in water source. One is biological oxygen demand, another one is chemical oxygen demand. So, biological oxygen demand is termed as BOD, chemical oxygen demand is termed as COD. And for that matter in the laboratory also, uh, you will be doing the COD experiment regularly, in, thereby you will be getting some more idea about the concept of COD. Here we see what is this BOD, how to measure the amount of oxidizable impurities present in any given water source or given water sample by biological oxygen demand method. So, what is this BOD? BOD is a measure of dissolved oxygen required to oxidize biologically oxidizable impurities present in water. So, what is that? BOD is a measure that is biological oxygen demand is nothing but the amount of oxygen, amount of not the normal oxygen, amount of dissolved oxygen which is required to oxidize biologically oxidizable impurities present in water. That means what? First and foremost thing is that means water contains oxidizable impurities and there are some organic compounds, there are some organic matter, there is some organic matter which is present in water which is an impurity, but these biological organic matter which is present in water as impurity which can be oxidized by some microorganisms. There are some microorganisms, there are some bacteria that can oxidize the impurities present in water. These kinds of impurities which can be oxidized by bacteria are called as biologically oxidizable impurities. Okay. And these biologically oxidizable impurities can be oxidized by these microorganisms which are also naturally present in water. Okay. And these microorganisms in order to oxidize these impurities, they need dissolved oxygen. They need dissolved oxygen. What these microorganisms will do? They will oxidize these biologically oxidizable impurities into CO2 and H2O by absorbing, by utilizing dissolved oxygen present in the water, dissolved oxygen present in the water. So, these kinds of oxidizable impurities are called as biologically oxidizable impurities. So, among all the oxidizable impurities which can be present in water, which can be generally present in water, a kind of the oxidizable impurities which, which are oxidizable, which can be oxidized by microorganisms 
and these kinds of impurities are called as biologically oxidizable impurities. And these microorganisms in order to oxidize these impurities, they utilize dissolved oxygen during that process, cleared no. So therefore, BOD is a measure of dissolved oxygen, BOD is nothing but amount of the dissolved oxygen required to oxidize biologically oxidizable impurities. Here one point you need to understand that the dissolved oxygen is not directly involved in oxidizing these impurities. Dissolved oxygen is utilized by microorganisms present in the water and these microorganisms by utilizing the dissolved oxygen they will be oxidizing these impurities. How much of these oxygen, how much of this oxygen is required by the microorganisms in order to oxidize these biologically oxidizable impurities is what we call as BOD, biological oxygen demand. And the point here is as you are observing here, microorganisms consume dissolved oxygen thereby they oxidize the biologically oxidizable impurities into CO2 and H2O, but for this process they need generally 5 days of, five days of time at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. What we need to do is in a tank we have to keep the impure water, we have to supply, uh, we have to uh, we have to introduce microorganisms in the sewage treatment plant and these microorganisms will be absorbed and we have to keep the water in a tank at 20 degrees Celsius and we will we need to pass pure oxygen continuously in order to supply enough quantity of oxygen into these microorganisms and these microorganisms will be absorbing that oxygen and oxidizing these impurities into CO2 and H2O in a matter of 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius. Therefore, biological oxygen demand is nothing but the amount of dissolved oxygen required by the microorganisms. The biological oxygen demand is nothing but the amount of dissolved oxygen required by the microorganisms to oxidize the biologically oxidizable impurities in 1 litre of water because we have to quantify it in 1 litre of water over a period of 5 days at 25 at 20 degrees Celsius. I repeat once again therefore biologically biological oxygen demand is nothing but the amount of dissolved oxygen required by the microorganisms in order to oxidize biologically oxidizable impurities present in 1 litre of the water sample over a period of 5 days at 20 degree Celsius. This is what is called as biological oxygen demand. Look at the word itself. How much of the dissolved oxygen demanded by the microorganisms in order to oxidize all the biologically oxidizable impurities present in 1 litre of the water sample in a period of 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius is what we call as biological oxygen demand. In a simple way, the amount of oxygen demanded by microorganisms that is what we call as biological oxygen demand. So therefore, biological oxygen demand is nothing but is it, it is indicating indirectly the amount of dissolved oxygen required to oxidize biologically oxidizable impurities present in water. So therefore, among the different kinds of oxidizable impurities present in the water sample, biological oxidiz biologically oxidizable impurities are present. These impurities are the impurities which can be oxidized by microorganisms. But these microorganisms during this oxidizing process consumes dissolved oxygen. And by consuming dissolved oxygen, these microorganisms will oxidize this biologically oxidizable impurities into CO2 and H2O. How much of the dissolved oxygen is consumed by these microorganisms during the process of oxidizing these impurities into CO2 and H2O in 1 litre of the water sample over a period of 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius is what we call as biological oxygen demand. And how to find out this biological oxygen demand or how to find out this BOD value of any given water sample? It is very simple to do that. What we do is uh, uh, there are uh, chemical processes in order to measure the amount of dissolved oxygen present uh, in any given water sample. We use iodometric method and uh, in order to find out the amount of uh, dissolved oxygen uh, present in any given water sample, 
what we do is we take 1 litre of the water sample and we find out the amount of dissolved oxygen present in the given water sample and we find out we record it and after finding out the amount of dissolved oxygen present in the water sample of 1 litre then what we do is to that 1 litre of the water sample we introduce microorganisms we keep it for 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius. At the end of the fifth day, we conduct the experiment again, we find out the amount of dissolved oxygen present in the same water sample of 1 litre. Naturally, whenever this water sample contains biologically oxidizable impurities, naturally DO2 will always be less than DO1 because in the period of 5 days, some amount of the dissolved oxygen is will be consumed by microorganisms in order to oxidize those impurities. So, therefore, what happens though first what we have to do? We have to take 1 litre of the water sample, find out how much, how much is the amount of dissolved oxygen present in the water sample, then take the same 1 litre, keep it for uh, add microorganisms, keep it for 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius. At the end of the fifth day, find out the amount of dissolved oxygen again and call it as DO2, DO1 minus DO2 will be giving you the biological oxygen demand BOD value of that given water sample. Imagine for example, DO1 you are finding out the dissolved oxygen amount in the beginning in 1 litre of the water sample by conducting the suitable experiment and you will be getting imagine you will be getting suppose 10 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Okay. For every litre of water 10 milligrams of oxygen is present as dissolved oxygen. At the end of the fifth day, you are conducting the experiment again after introducing microorganisms after keeping it for 5 days at 20 degrees Celsius, you are measuring the dissolved oxygen again. Imagine now it is 4 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube, 10 minus 4 it is going to be 6 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. Therefore, BOD value of that water sample is going to be 6 milligrams of oxygen per dm cube. To that extent, biologically oxidizable impurities are present in that 1 litre of the water sample. This is how we can find out BOD of any given water sample. Therefore, we understood that among various kinds of the oxidizable impurities present, biologically oxidizable impurities are also present in the water sample and, and these biologically oxidizable impurities can be, okay, will indicate the amount of dissolved oxygen required to oxidize these biologically oxidizable impurities and BOD value of any water sample can be found out by this method. So, therefore, overall in this session what we try to understand what are all the water quality parameters and we also try to understand about water pollution. What are all the water quality parameters to decide whether the given water sample, given source of water is portable, is suitable for our purpose or not and what is water pollution, what kind of impurities, different kinds of impurities which are um, uh, responsible for making water to be polluted, making water to be not suitable for our regular usage that also we understood and we understood what is biological oxygen demand and how to determine the biological oxygen demand. Therefore, in this particular part of the water chemistry, we get an idea, we got an idea about uh, how water source in this earth is being distributed what are all the different sources of water, what are all the water quality parameters to decide whether any given water sample is suitable for our purpose or not, our domestic purpose or not and what are all the sources of water pollution. Then out of different kinds of impurities which can contaminate water, we took the example of biologically oxidizable impurities, there we understood what is BOD, what is biological oxygen demand and how to measure BOD value of any given water sample. Thank you.